Hey guys, today I want to take a minute and talk to you about how to lay out and get measurements for jack rafters in a valley. So the jack rafters are the ones that are going to go all the way up the valley and get progressively shorter. So once you have your first one in place, how do we determine the measurements of the rest? Well, first layout. There's a couple ways to do layout. Easiest way is to take your framing square, it's two foot, and hold it right against the rafter and get our first mark and measure back an inch and a half for your other mark. So we know that's where this rafter is going to sit. The other way, you can measure all the way across and mark it as we go, wherever that intersection is, all the way up. Or if you know how to use the charts, uh, on a framing square, you can measure up and lay them out that way. Um, now, since we have our first one done, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to actually get this measurement. We had our first measurement, which is 104 and a 16th. Okay, that's from longest point down to longest point. Silver burden. All right, so on here, I don't know if you guys can see this, there's a chart. Okay, and we're going down to the difference in jack length for 24 inch centers. Now, the numbers across the top stand for the pitch of the roof. We're on a 612 pitch. This is the column we want. 26 and 13 sixteenths is the difference, okay, in length from our first one to our second one. So we know the length of this is 104 and a sixteenth, okay. Now the next length up here should be um, 26 and 13 sixteenths less. Now when we actually measured it, if we go the longest point down here, okay, up here, there we go, longest point down here, to the point up here, okay, we're actually 77 and a half, so if we measure it, okay, our difference is 26 and 9 sixteenths and not 26 and 13 sixteenths, so the general rule of thumb that I use, if you're within a quarter of an inch, you're within that quarter of an inch you're probably good if you're worried i would split the difference between these two but either of them will work all that needs to happen up here is your sheeting has to land on the centers okay so we have one cut the next one cut already and i want to show you guys what we mean by long cuts and short cuts all right so this is the long point because it's the longest point and on the other end this is the long point, okay? Now, this way we had to cut it at this angle due to the pitch of the roof, okay? So, I showed you guys in a different video how to go out laying this long 612 and the short 612. The only thing you have to do is you have to pitch your saw, angle your saw to the same degree angle the roof is. Now, the easiest way is just to look it up online. Um, there's a super easy way to check it with your speed square, which I also showed you in the square video. So I'm going to tell you right now, for a 612 pitch, it's 26 and a half degrees. So angle your saw for 26 and a half degrees and make your cut. Now, when you nail these in place, the first one, I always nail through the back side of the ridge board. Then we'll line up the bottom and nail that, okay? I always go one side, the other side, one side, the other side. In the short roof, you might not have to, but if you're doing a whole roof, you put all of the rafters on one side, it's going to warp your ridge board, which is why we have this strung. Again, we probably didn't have to put a string on such a short stretch of roof, um, but it's definitely beneficial. So if you guys are interested in how to mark this out after we get that measurement, go back and watch that square video again. All right, have a good day. Thanks.